Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Sticky Note Conversations with Erica Washington. We really believe in democracy. They wouldn't also be using the term vote for the lesser of two evils. When you are voting, you are voting for who you think will lead us in the best way. Within democracies, populist appeals grounded in fear and bigotry and resentment have elevated leaders who once they're in office, have sought to systematically undermine democratic institutions. And in this America, millions of young people grow up in the sunlight of opportunity. Tragically and unfortunately, there is another America. You know, democracy has been on my mind a lot lately. And for a lot of different reasons. The elections are being held across the country. Primaries, that is. Both presidential primaries and caucuses, as well as state primaries. And right now, we are in the middle of our state primary here in Nevada. And this gives voters the opportunity to decide amongst um sometimes three, four, or five different candidates that are vying for the same seat. And so there are some pretty uh, important seats that are up for grabs right now, including four school board seats. So it's really, really important that people take a little bit of time and research everyone who's running and try to make the best decision that is good for you and your family and your community. But as I think more about democracy, it had me wanting to think back on some previous episodes. And even though we just did a sort of best of, I kind of wanted to go back again and dive a little deeper and listen to what some of our past guests have talked about when we talked about democracy. What is democracy to them? What is democracy to us? Do we actually have true democracy in its purest form here in the United States? Um, a, a quick question, I think, um, I want to ask you as we finish up this conversation about um, the election. Democracy. Mm-hmm. What does democracy mean to you? What does democracy mean to me? Democracy means... Democracy to me, personally I would say, would mean that there is no minority. And when I say that, I mean that everyone's needs are being met. I see democracy as equity rather than equality. Um, I see it as the people who need help will get help financially, socially, mentally, etc. I see that as um, voters participating and their vote feeling like it truly matters, feeling like my vote is really going towards a candidate um, that is going to implement the policy that I want to see. We are seeking to make America one nation, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Now let me say that The struggle for civil rights and the struggle to make these two Americas one America is much more difficult today than it was five or ten years ago. You know, Shanae and Ken, we had such a great conversation. Let's listen back to what they had to say about this upcoming election. Um, Let me ask you both, what is democracy? to you and do we have it you can start Kenny I'm gonna pass that one to the smart one 
All right, a democracy, do we have it? No, fully no. We're still mo- moving towards that. When our folks can vote without without um, barriers, then we are headed there. At this point, we are closer to it um, here in Michigan than in other states. I always talk about our cousins in the South and what they're experiencing with gerrymandering, um, with over with with abandonment in education, with uh, the lack of reproductive freedom there, with uh, the racism, the attacks on HBCUs. I see it as all encompassing with inequality in education. No, we're not there yet. Uh, what we're doing as two people in this movement is to help restore it in some kind of way. Uh, again, we look to our coalition partners and, and they've worked so hard to increase voting rights here in Michigan. They've worked so hard to champion environmental justice in in um, with Marathon Oil downtown in downtown Detroit in, in Flint and in Benton Harbor. Our partners, our coalition partners have done a heck of a job here. People talk about the success in Michigan. They talk to talk about politicians i'm i always correct folks i say no 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 this has happened long before any politician has run an office this coalition that's been put together in place around those specific issues i mentioned economic justice environmental justice voting rights accessibility that's all has happened way before any politician is announced to run for any kind of office I give them all credit because they laid the foundation. When folks told them no, they said yes. So yeah, we're moving a step towards democracy. We haven't fully reached that year that, and when we do, I hope to see it before uh, before uh, God calls me home. I love the way she puts it. I love you too. I just love it. Mm, I love you. Love it when you talk about democracy, honey. Mm, sexy. <laughs> Happy. <laughs> <laughs> Say it again. Mm. Even my own daughter, Shay Jordan, her thoughts on democracy were brilliant. And so I want to ask you about democracy in mm-hmm. like in, in a nutshell. Like what does democracy mean to you? Ooh, that's a heavy word, which is It's a heavy word, but it's also kind of funny because, right, my three and four-year-olds are not politically involved right now, but this is the appropriate time, right, to teach them about how the government works. I I believe that. And so we've been having conversations about democracy um, and voting and how that works, Um, which, of course, right now to them is just the unfairness that when they get outvoted on something that there's nothing else that can happen. Um, Cause it's all simple stuff, right? We're voting. What, what song do we want to have our dance party to today? And I give them two options and more kids vote for, you know, shake Beyonce. your silly out. Right? Oh. <laughs> I wish I could play Beyonce in the classroom, um, but um, more kids are voting for shake your sillies out. than old McDonald had a farm. And then all the kids that wanted old McDonald had a farm are really upset about it because they're like that was that's what i wanted and it's that's their jam that what i wanted right and so when we're having those conversations of like unfortunately when we're voting and we get outvoted we have to be okay with our options there's an irony to that <laughs> right when you get into a bigger conversation of democracy in our government because Theoretically, the idea is supposed to work in the same way. We're all voting. Whoever gets outvoted has to be okay with the outcome. But when you're talking about it from the perspective of the U.S. government, a lot of the things that are being outvoted, number one, are ideals that don't represent us. Um, And a lot of the times you have to question who's being outvoted and who are the majority of the votes and who do they actually represent. I feel like it gets more complicated when you talk about it from the U.S. government perspective because you're getting into this conversation of privilege, right? A lot of the bills that are being passed and a lot of the conversations that are being had in our current democracy um, are, are issues that, so, that, that benefit you know, the people in positions of power. 
a lot of the economic issues right now are just that people can't afford food. And a lot of what's being voted on and a lot of what's being passed is more or less to benefit the people in positions of power who already have money. And so when you're talking about it from a perspective of, that's all I can think of when it comes to stuff like this is just privilege. It's just privilege because when you have that privilege, you have that power, right? And when you have that privilege and that power, who is being left behind? And the people that are being left behind are the majority, are the majority that are dealing with the, the majority that are dealing with the aftermath. You know what I mean? And so yeah. I, I can't say that I feel like I am being properly represented because I've even had conversations about like the people that have been voted into positions of power that I felt like represented me. And then, you know, they end up with that privilege and power and it kind of corrupts them. Um, and it ends so up you being that, you know, I no longer feel represented, even though at one point I did. Mm -hmm. So do you feel like we have democracy? Not in the simplistic way. Not in the way that I teach my kids, not in the way that because if it if it really was this idea that, you know, you have these options, we vote for the options and whatever the outcome is, we have to be OK with it, that I think that that would be. You know, that would it, it is what it is at that point, then it would be a question of like, well, do I want to live in the U.S. if this is what the majority feels like if this is what's being represented because if it's legitimately that the majority feels this way and wants these things then it becomes a bigger conversation of like well where do i fit in do i fit in here or do i need to fit in somewhere else however mm -hmm. when you think about it becomes 10 times more complicated when you think about it from the perspective of our u.s government and our society who, you know, for hundreds and hundreds of years has always been represented by the same privilege and power. It's, it's the system in itself doesn't function the way that it was meant to. And I don't necessarily think that our democracy is what we think it is. I don't think it's what we teach in schools. I think that when you talk about the way the government works and the way democracy works, and when you talk about it in the general sense, the way we teach it in U.S. history, you are taking away the years of, um, you know, anti-Black legislature. You're talking about taking away anti-queer legislation. You're talking about um, misogynistic legislature you are neglecting to tell the whole story who was really representing the u.s who's really representing the ideals of the nation right um which isn't isn't who lives here now right, right. re-listening to some of the old episodes i realized derek and i actually never talked about democracy so this piece is actually brand new and we recorded it um, pretty late at night because I want to get his opinions on democracy. Now, mind you, these are his opinions and his opinions only, not the opinions of Sticky Note Conversations, Make It Work Nevada, KUNV, Spotify, Apple, nobody, just Derek. It can only be Derek's opinions. But he always has some points. Let's take a listen. Nevada right now is in the midst of their uh, early vote for their state primary. And so people can, you know, vote by mail or people can, you know, show up and vote um, for the primary, whether it's Democrat or Republican, whichever side that they are um, registered for. And it brings up a lot of thoughts and questions around like what actually is democracy and are we seeing it happen right now in real time? Some of the stuff I've been thinking about is obviously 
the most recent um, revelations of where we stand with the possible, excuse me, with uh, the possibility that Trump, who has been recently convicted of 38 felonies, could still run for president. Is that democracy? Um, I'm also thinking about in Mexico, they just uh, elected their first woman president. And they're not the only country to have elected a woman president. Many countries have. United States, not so much. Yet, we seem to believe that we are the epitome of what democracy is. So I thought this episode would be a great time, especially while we are in the midst of our primary, um, in the early vote of our primary, to talk about what is democracy and do we have it right now? And so we'll cut back and forth between um, older episodes where we talked about democracy and then where we are at this exact moment. So Derek, I wanted to pick your brain a little bit. I don't know why I said that. I hate that term, pick your brain. <laughs> that's almost as much as I hate that, that when people answer a question, like, that's a really good question. No, it's not. Oh, I like that. Cause then I, 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 Do feel you? Good. I feel like somebody just, people are, I feel like it's a compliment towards me when I'm just I like, think oh, I did, I, uh, I did just ask a really good question. Didn't I? Or maybe it's a stall tactic while they try to think of how to answer. Yeah. I think it's a stall tactic and it's like the accordion hands. I just, I, every time somebody does that, I'm like, Oh, really? Um, well, thanks for having me on. I think about democracy all the freaking time. Um, I think, you know me, I'm a big America booster. I'm probably one of the most patriotic people that you know. Um, and I excuse your, a lot of things. You got your pom-poms out? I do. Yeah, USA. Um, we do have a democracy. No country in the world has a perfect one. And I think that when we compare ourselves to places like Mexico, I, I, you know, I read up on her. Uh, she's not as, she's not like, oh, it's a woman, so therefore, nah, she's more the same. Um, she's uh, in the pocket of the oil companies, and she's, uh, even though she's supposed to be very environmentally friendly, she's expected to continue the policies of the current president who is very much anti climate change knowledge, et cetera. So all women are not good women, just like all skin folk and kin folk. Um, having said that, we are at a point in democracy that we never thought would happen. And that is we could lose it. And, you know, America tends not to think things could happen to us. Like, you know, school shootings could never happen here. Well, the end of democracy could never happen here. It is hanging on by thread, to be perfectly honest. And this election will tell us whether or not that thread is going to become a rope or whether that thread is going to get broken. So the question begs, what is democracy? Hmm. We don't know. Uh, democracy well, then how can changed. you say we have it? I'll tell you what. We have, how do you put this? <sighs> democracy is a living document. What was democracy when this country was founded is not democracy now. What is democracy now may not be democracy a, a year from now. Um, democracy, to be democracy, must constantly change. So to say what it is, there are some basics, mainly right to free speech, right to assembly, uh, the right to vote. Those things are democracy, but democracy, you know, free speech is under attack. Uh, and, you know, the right wing likes to say it's on them, but no, the left wing. Uh, look at what's happening to kids who protest against Palestine. They are being shut up. They're not getting their diplomas. They're being blackballed on Wall Street, you know. So that's not free speech. That's not democracy. Uh, the voting. If you close the polls at 5 p.m., you're basically saying that you don't want anyone who has a job to go vote. That's not democracy. Um, the right to assembly. One of the things that bothers me when I hear young people talking about how they're not going to vote for Joe Biden because of this, that, and the other. Um, well, one of the first things that they want to do is put out the act that the president can say that he can shoot you for protesting. That directly affects youth. Only one person running for office is saying that, and it ain't Joe Biden. 
So democracy is under attack. We do have it, but it is constantly changing. Is it democracy to allow someone who is a convicted felon to run for office? Unfortunately, yeah, um, because the rules aren't tight enough. The great thing about democracy is you can always change the rules. The bad thing about democracy is you can always change the rules. <laughs> so, you know, yes, um, it's horrible that that man can run. But in a democratic system, the laws don't stop him from running. But the laws can be changed in a democratic system. So the thing is to vote in the right people and get the laws changed. Do I have faith that those people are going to be ballsy enough or take the effort to do that? I don't know. I mean, and, and I and I hear your point. It's that sense of if you have free speech, then you have free speech. So he was allowed to say, lock her up, lock her up. And mm-hmm. Which he denies ever saying now. I know. I saw that. Uh, <laughs> and then they and then they cut to a, a video of him saying it. Right. Um, and so he can say that he can also say, you know, if he shot somebody in the middle of Times Square that he wouldn't get arrested or whatever he said. And that's all free speech. Right. Yeah. Um, it's a matter it's of a- like, when when do these things cross a line? Because I think if anybody saw the interview that he did, which was after around some was it a UFC fight or something? I don't know. <laughs> and he says that people won't stand for it. Like the public just won't stand for it. If he is um, sent to prison or if they sentence him to an actual prison sentence. And to me, it sounded a lot like a dog whistle, very uh, similar to the insurrection. And like he was calling them on, let's go Brandon or whatever it is they're saying. (laughs) And so that, so that not necessarily used in the right context, but okay. Oh, sorry. Well, you know, I, I, I don't know, but understanding that you're allowed to say the things that you want to say, um, because this is the land of the free and the home of the brave. And we have, you know, all of these unalienable rights, inalienable rights. And, but there comes a time where, words can be dangerous sticks and stones will break bones but words will also hurt we have you asked when are we going to cross the line the line was crossed years ago so many times by this particular man that the lines no longer exist and that's a sad thing for america because the president no matter what was the president i mean even ronald reagan who as a gay man watched what he did to gay people when they were dying and just needed the government to help. Um, Even Ronald Reagan didn't cross the line. George Bush never crossed the line. The only president who crossed the line was Nixon, and Nixon was dealt with, you know, in a bad way, I think. I I think that he's been dealt with by jail sentencing. But Donald Trump is unique in that he brings out the absolute worst in white people. And I say white people because, yes, there are blacks and more Latinos, but they're more about something else. Donald Trump brings out the lynch mob mentality in white people. I don't I'm not white. I'm barely white adjacent, but I don't get it. But he has crossed the line so many times and those people have erased the lines. And I say those people in the most pejorative way possible. Well, but how how do you balance that with democracy? Voting. I mean, it's just that simple. Voting. In our um, current situation here in Nevada, early vote, in Las Vegas, um, in, in Southern Nevada, I don't, or maybe, yeah, in Southern Nevada, I believe it is, only 7% of the um population eligible voters have voted and the lowest vote total is where the black district ward five and so these are the same the only place where black people live no i'm saying no but you know the historically black section uh is the lowest voting totals by far not just sort of by far and you know it's a chicken or the egg thing are you not voting because you don't think it matters are you not does it not matter because you don't vote? You or know? you, but also, um, 
having some experience in some of these districts and doing some GOTB work, I also know a lot of people like to vote on Election Day. And that is me. I'm old. I vote on Election Day. But let me tell you a story about that. So second Obama term, I was going to vote on Election Day. I got I, I was late, but I was like, it's OK. I got it. I got it. I got it. I get to the poll and I was in the wrong place to vote. Now, in early vote, you can vote anywhere. Not well, now you can vote anywhere. You can yeah, now. But at the time, at the time, you back in the day. Mm-hmm. Yeah, back in the day, back in my day. So I ended up running all the way across town, trying to get to a place where I could vote, and I got there too late, and they wouldn't let me vote. Which is, you know, they shouldn't let me vote. But yeah, so that is one of the things. If you're gonna vote on election day, make sure you have your booty in the booth in time. That's yes, my personal you need to PSA. be in line before 7 p.m. in yeah. order to be counted. But once you're in line, you can stay in line. Right. That is a really important point, you know. But now that we also have a uh, vote by mail, you know, which to me is like the take home test. And it's the best way because you can sit there and study the names and actually Google each person and learn a little bit more if you are unsure about who some of these people okay. are. You're asking a lot. Um, so what? Uh, I am. I'm yeah, saying that's what I do. I, I yeah, think yes, that... you, you and ten other people. Unfor- okay, back to the woman thing. So mm-hmm. when I didn't know anything about politics, when I didn't know a candidate's positions, I always voted for one of two things: the blackest mm-hmm. name, the mm-hmm. blackest name, or the woman. Only to find out later, women are just as horrible as men when it comes to politics. Mm-hmm. Some women, you know, mm-hmm. you get your you get your right wing women, and yeah, I I literally, I literally would vote for the woman if like judges, and judges affect black people more than anybody. But I just said, well, a woman's got to be better than a man. And back then, back in my day, we didn't have a whole lot of black judges or black candidates. So you were basically trying to pick who's the least evil white person. And so I figured women were, and boy, did that be proven wrong. I mean, we got women like Michelle Fiore and Victoria Seaman running around. Um, I still giggle when I say her name. Uh, but yeah, it's just, you know, yeah. you are exactly right. Google, do your research, do all that stuff. Yeah, understand just, why there's a there should be articles about those two that you just named yeah. together and what had happened in the uh, in the chambers of city council. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and you, but I'll give Michelle Fury one thing: until you've seen her movie Sirens, you don't know cinematic greatness. That's all. That's all. <laughs> I, that's, my podcast is not ever to promote <laughs> ever to promote such shenanigans. It's not. You that's it not why I call you. <laughs> <laughs> are there any good movies about democracy oh my god i'll tell you one of the movies about colonization that is about democracy there's a movie called the battle of algiers 1961 62 black and white and it is about the war in algeria the war of um uh, to get rid of the colonialization the colonial powers of france and it, it basically um it's about being occupied and it's about the fact that the people who are occupied have no democracy no 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 word in their own country and i think it's a great movie about democ- democracy um another one that i like a lot is that movie with kevin cosner where there was like one vote the town had one vote and they had to like get him to vote. He's in it. And some white lady who was popular at the time, probably that Annie Oakley lady, what's her name? Um, Oakley. Diane, Dan Keaton, Dan Keaton. She might be in it, but somebody like her, okay. uh, you know, Helen Hunt, Jennifer, Jennifer Aniston, somebody are, like are that. Are they all the same person? Basically <laughs> some white lady. Um, but yeah, that movie is really good I, because it, it talks about the behind the scenes of politics and how fake it all is and how the people who put the most money into it could care less about democracy and the process of being America. So I, I think, think you're talking movie. about swing vote. That's it. Who's the, who's the girl? Who's the, who's the lady? Who's the woman? It's Helen Hunt. Um, it's not Meryl no. Streep because she's too good for Paula us. Paula Patton is in it. Right, right. She's in it. 
but then there's some little girl. Like nah, he must main... be her daughter. I've never seen this movie, so but it looks like he must have a daughter or something. Yeah, he does. Um, he does. His and so they're just showing her wow. and him. And so I'm not seeing Kelsey Grammer, Dennis Hop, right, there's, uh, Hopper, there's a female, uh, Stanley a female, Tucci, um, George Lopez, yeah. Nathan Lane, and Paula Patton. That's all I'm saying. Oh, Madeline Carroll. Mm -hmm. I don't even know who she is. Uh, so, regardless, um, okay, I've anyway, never seen Swing. Boat, I think it's a so. very good. Uh, yeah, it's very good. Um, other movies that are good: Mr. Deeds Goes to Washington uh, with Jimmy Stewart. Um, oh, The oh, Manchurian Jimmy Candidate Stewart. is a yeah. The Manchurian Candidate is a great movie. It's not about voting, but it's about how people try to take democracy from us. And that's with Angela Lansbury, Lawrence Harvey, uh, and a bunch of other people. That movie's actually scary because about democracy. Idiocracy, another great movie about democracy and what we're going through right now, the whole dumbing down thing. You know? Well, yeah. And I think the candidate with uh Robert Redford. I'll put that. That's on a good list. movie as well. That is definitely. And then a good movie. Shirley um is my recommend my recommendation. I watched for that the other day. I uh, yeah, it, I watched. It was nice. Mm -hmm. I think that Mahogany is a great movie about democracy. <laughs> You always be so ready for me to be done talking to you. I mean, I guess, I guess there is some election happening in the movie. That is true. Fine. It's a, you know, there's so I, I tell you, if you want to learn about democracy from a more uh, thirty thousand foot view, as, as they say, watch black exploitation movies. Many of them, like Three the Hard Way, talk about the system, and and usually there's a politician. Barbershop, another good movie about democracy. That's an, a really good movie. Like that's accessible. But so many of the black exploitation movies involve political characters and corruption. And one of the problems with democracy is it thrives on corruption. Um, not as bad as democracy thrives on corruption, Absolutely. or the government. No, democracy. Well, okay, I see what you're saying. I say the running of democracy, the consultants, the parties, the politicians, the donors. That's all democracy as well, because they all have a right to be there. And corruption is deep, is deep. And black corruption, political corruption, is hurtful and harmful and sad. And unfortunately, we have a lot of that. And when you talk about doing your google yes i wish people did because they would see you know some stuff just don't sound right and if you knew about it you know you would be able to to handle it better you'd be able well, to to be more informed and to stop it well when i do my google i usually um am looking to find out what they post about on social media i'm looking at their actual candidate website but that to me doesn't tell me enough i need to I look for the messy see. stuff now you got to go for the messy stuff because the messy stuff will tell you who they are as far as their character goes i believe that yeah, find out what they're liking and commenting yeah, on right right that tells you media. way more because if i'm putting on social media i'm putting my best foot forward i'm putting the d shot that where i look the best if i'm on if i'm somebody else is exposing me you can then go if it keeps happening you can pretty much be sure that something ain't right if it's just a one-off you go hmm and you do some more research and you look at who they voted for if, if people got the time look at donors look at what they voted for but ain't nobody got that kind of time and that's why organizations have to do the work mm. like make it work nevada like make it work nevada.org <laughs> oh, wow, thanks so last question uh -huh. wondering um have your feelings changed about this upcoming election are you feeling more nervous are you feeling more hopeful like what's your temperature check right now in the mid space i am going to say this and i've been thinking about this a lot and this is going to be my message going forward. Black people, we need to not worry about Palestine. We need to not worry about immigration. And I don't care if it's Haitian or African or Mexican. Immigration is not what we need to worry about right now. We need to worry about us. And if Donald Trump becomes president, us is screwed. So vote for Joe Biden. Put all your crap aside. Vote for Joe Biden. Because 
At That's least not what I'm know, asking you. No, no, no. I'm, wait, I'm telling you this. Mm-hmm. I believe that Joe Biden is going to win. We need to swap their butt booties in winning, much like the um, the midterms. Didn't nobody say the midterms were rigged? Why? Because we kicked their butts. People need to vote for Joe Biden, and we'll figure it out later. Um, you know, it's like, what does it say? Kill them all and let, let God sort them out. We're sort of at that point. We have to kill Trumpism. We have to kill MAGA. We have to kill fascism. And we have to kill it. We have to put the stake through the heart, the silver bullet through the brain. Because honestly, this is it. This is our last chance. I do think Joe Biden's going to win. I do think that, uh, for instance, in Nevada, I think Susie Lee's going to win. I don't know about Jackie, what her name is. I don't know. Um, but I do believe Senator that. Senator Jackie Rosen? Yeah. Um, so I don't, a, a woman I've never seen in any black spaces. So I'll just leave it at that. Um, but I do think we're going to win, but we need we need to win decisively. You can't ever squash half a roach. You know what I mean? You can't let it keep walking. You got to make sure that thing is on its back, flat, with pus coming out of it. Because otherwise, another head will just pop up. The next time, they're not going to be so stupid. They're not going to put an idiot like Donald Trump up. They're going to put somebody who seems normal up, like a Nikki Haley. Or can we talk about Tim Scott? Girl. <laughs> Hold up. <laughs> Wait a minute. Let me put some groove in it. Okay. That, that, let me that, re- rewind one second. Okay. <laughs> we, we, we can do that. We can do that. Let me just say that the question was, are you yeah, worried really- about the election? And so it sounds like you are somewhat worried, but you believe that, but you believe and you have hope that the current president will. I believe will in win. my country. I, and I'll tell you why I believe. I'm an Uber driver. I talk to white people all the time, and we live in Las Vegas. When they see the Trump Tower, 90% of them have negative things to say. And if I engage them in conversation, there's a silent majority of white people who are tired of being made to look bad because of people like Trump. Simple as that. And so I, I don't hold faith that the youth or the blacks or whatever are going to actually do this. I have faith. The Republican Party right now depends on white people being horrible people. Some are. There's horrible black people. There's horrible everything. But they think all white people are horrible. And I beg to differ. I beg to differ. I think that the majority of white people ain't involved in all of this hatred. You know, the system, sure. But the majority of individual white people see through this guy. And they see through the Republicans. You know, I, I do. don't I don't I don't think that everything is necessarily about being horrible or even hateful. There's that group of Trump supporters that are anti everything, anti black, yeah. anti immigrant, anti woman, anti anti. But then you right. have your other group of folks who believe that Trump, even though he may not be a model citizen, is good enough for the country because they believe that it's good enough for their personal bottom line. And so they, they're ignoring, they're ignoring the bigotry because they can also because it's not directly affecting them either. I so will they say can this. Ignore it. Right. I will say this. They're, they could care less about the bigotry. They could care less about the system of racism. They could care less about black people. What I'm saying is they don't like him as white people and white women are really offended by this dude. And white women are what got him into office in the first place. And he has done nothing but he's he's your ex-husband's ass uh, jerk off uncle. You know what I mean? So like he he viscerally upsets women. The women he doesn't upset, look at them. Um, and I don't mean from a look standpoint, I mean look at them, you know, with their trucks and their idiocy. Having said that. I think that white people are going to save us this election. I really do. And it has nothing to do with the rest of us. Abortion is a huge thing for white women. Uh, You know, and and the other thing, IVF, I don't even know what it is, but I know white people don't like what he's doing. I know that's some rich white people stuff and they are not happy about it. So, you know, let's go back to Tim Scott. So, (laughs) 
I knew you'd make your way back there regardless. <laughs> Them gums ain't made for walking. I don't understand what he thinks he's going to get out of all this. You're gay. And I'm going to say it. Sue me. Gay. I'm gay. I know gay. You know, I know gay. I'm like Grace Jones in, in Boomerang. I know gay. Okay. Um, Tim Scott it's is Pride gay. Month. I can tell. <laughs> I'm, I'm on it. Yeah. Tim Scott, the white woman he found, what do you think you're doing? If you had any brains whatsoever, you would have found a, a dark skinned, handsome woman and to try to get you ahead. Uh, but no, you got uh, some white woman. Who is that supposed to appeal to? The white racist MAGA or the black, the, the well, the black men who always wanted a snow bunny? What are you doing? The the constant kissing of Trump's bootay. The you know th Tim Scott is going to end up with a orange face. He's got it so far of Trump, and it's embarrassing. You know Byron McDonald's or McDaniel's or whatever. He's bad. But Tim Scott takes it to a whole new level. It's only a matter of time before that man is like, whoa, do, 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 do. you know, like, oh, he bugs me. That's all. <laughs> well, I'll say to that, not much, except to say that whatever shade of woman he got, like, I think that he's if gay. It's a beard. If, <laughs> if he's a, if it's a beard, it's a beard. But I think to your point about, um, you know, Mag, uh, MAGA um, folks that even if it was a, a dark skinned black woman, I think that they still be OK with that because they fetishize black women, too. Or w I should say black women are fetishized by a lot of different races. So, yeah, and they can still and they can still be racist. But never. Yeah, it's never in a desirable way. It's more of a. She's going to tear me apart and blah, blah, blah. And then she gets back out to the fields. We've seen it. Mariah Carey in that movie about the butler. Yeah. Watch. <laughs> You're talking about the movie The Butler. Yeah. Oh, Remember? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, she will. I forget. You know, I forget she was in that movie. Because it she was, was so, so short good in, in it. But she was so good in it. She, Is that why? That's why. Because you know what? You talk about actresses all the time going, you know, real for a role, but they still look pretty. Mariah, it took me a minute to realize that was Mariah. Much like in Precious, Mariah is an amazing actress. She's actually not okay. bad. She might want to do yeah. a little bit more film. I mean, compared to like a yeah. Beyonce or somebody, I really feel yeah. like she's a much she's better, better actress. Much better. Precious, she showed out. Also in Glitter. But anyway, it's gay month. <laughs> So, so watch glitter. everybody watch go watch glitter. glitter. That movie is so bad. Good. It's so bad. Good. <laughs> okay. So bottom line is people just need to go out and vote and they don't need to, vote and blue. shouldn't wait till the, and, and don't wait until the last Don't take minute. the chance. Don't take the chance. Don't be dared. That, don't that be is, dared. I think that is an important point to make that yeah. sometimes we do hold stuff off just because you'll get to it. You'll get to it. And then you yeah. miss an opportunity and then you wonder why the candidate that you wanted to vote for in the general election in November is not there for you to vote for. And and I will say this, black people especially vote for question three, which is in favor of ranked choice voting, because it gives you choices. You don't just get what's shoved down your throat by the Democratic or the Republican Party. You get to decide who you want to be elected. That's my commercial for ranked choice voting. <laughs> Question three, vote yes. Sir, you, you are not sponsoring this podcast. Um, <laughs> but you know what? That brings up a point. Like there will be an uh, episode, a very special episode of Sticky Note Conversations where we talk specifically about the um, Blossom deals the with <laughs> Blossom deals with the election. <laughs> Right. A very well, we talk <laughs> a very special episode, uh, a very special after school special. Right, we're going right, to talk right. about starring the, Alfonso Riviera. <laughs> we're going to talk about specifically the ballot measures that we will be voting on because there's a couple of them. And I know people might have questions. So I'm hoping folks will start emailing us at sticky note at make it work Nevada dot org where you can ask questions or 
volunteer people to be on the show or question Derek and the things that he says, because what he says Please do. has absolutely nothing to do with me. <laughs> and I do want to make one note because you said black uh, folks need to worry about black folks, but black folks also are immigrants too. And so, or first generation you immigrants. You know what? I, so I, that, I don't care. It's also important. <laughs> it's important. I don't care. I don't care. Um, and I'll just say that I'm a conservative, liberal, woke, quiet, black man. And honestly, all I care right now about are black people who are citizens right now who can vote. Get your asses out there and vote. If you are an immigrant, get your asses out there and vote. Get your ass. Oh, can I say ass on your show? You your booty's out there and vote. <laughs> Just go vote. Go vote. Go vote. And honestly, what I'm saying is don't get hung up on individual issues. Don't get hung up on Palestine. Don't get hung up on immigration. Vote as a collective. Vote for the whole group. That's what I'm saying. Vote for what we need right now. Don't say I'm not voting because Joe Biden closed the border. Don't say I'm not voting because Joe Biden gave, gave weapons to the Palestinians. That is not our problem right now. We come back to that. Well, we need to promise that they'll actually come back to it. And that's a whole other episode of a story. <laughs> yeah. Well, we'll talk about that next time. So right. I think that you are crazy a little bit, but I appreciate, <laughs> but I appreciate your views. And I think that it's all very important. And we are a show that holds a multitude of views and, um, I don't even know, like, because you have opinions. me a little flabbergasted right now. Yes, using opinions. <laughs> you are used opinions. to it by now. Come on. Bro. I know I am, <laughs> but it's late, and I'm like, my gosh, like, how do we edit this so it doesn't sound crazy and you don't sound like the opposite of a magnet? Please, um, please, please, don't edit me. No, uh -uh, uh -uh, uh -uh. <laughs> do not edit me. Leave it pure. Leave it pure. You will always get the real from me. Exactly what I'm thinking. I'm, I never don't. I, people think I just talk without thinking. I always know what I'm saying. I know you do. I know you yeah. do. Yeah. 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 You know, I thought what Ling Ling had to say about democracy and in the United States was really interesting, especially as an immigrant. Let's listen, let's listen, let's listen, let's listen, let's listen. And so thinking about, you know, the future, and it's something that I do a lot now that my children are also uh, coming into uh, all being, you know, voting age and, and growing up and figuring out where they, they, they fit in this world. I think about democracy and I think about liberation uh, and I've had some of those conversations here on the podcast with with two of my children. How would you, how do you define democracy? And do you think we have it right now in this moment? Oh, that's a tough one. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Talking about democracy. Um, I think in this country, I don't think we are as democratic as we say we are. Right. I think that also takes me back again. Like it's all a question of like um, who has power and who doesn't. Right. When you talked about working with people that are on tennis or on um, on uh, SNAP programs, like, you know, I think people that have a lot of power in this country, which is predominantly the, the um, rich and the white people. And when you look at communities of colors, you know, it's like they, they, they are the people that are almost like second class in many sense, right? It, in, in so many different environments that I can, as you know, you know, we have so many examples. And I think, I remember, I'll just tell you the story. I remember when I was very young um, in this work and I remember talking to a social worker one time and she was like, yeah, that woman that just came in, like she's, you know, blah, blah, blah. And she had $20, but, you know, she didn't have food on the table, but her nails were done. And, and she's like, why is she wasting money on getting her nails done? Well, first of all, to me, when I when I listened to her, I was like, number one, there's none of your business. Number two is maybe that's the only way she can show up with some dignity. So who are we to say that she shouldn't have her nails done just because she doesn't have money? She shouldn't spend money on herself to make herself, you know, 
do something for herself. I think that is the idea, right? In this country that if you are poor, you should not spend, like you said, have a steak. But if you if you don't have enough access, then you need to like put all your money where we people that have access think you should put your money to where it should go. But we are not them. And everybody has a choice. So why are we dictating what we think should be the right way onto other people? So it goes back to slavery. It goes back to the 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 who's in charge, who has the power, right? So con- democracy is con- in this country is not really, it's not democracy in its entirety that it should be. And it's not showing up that way for me. Clark County School District School Board Trustee Brenda Zamora had some interesting thoughts about this upcoming election and gave us some things to think about as far as keeping in mind what folks' motivations are for running. Running, running, running. One of the questions I've been asking people is about democracy and how do we feel about, you know, democracy at this point? And do you feel like we are living in our truth of democracy? Do you feel like we are that you are seeing democracy right now um, as it stands or what needs to change for us to actually be in a a fully um, democratic space and not democratic talking about the party, but democratic as in democracy. I want to say we're in an interesting position. All I think about right now is just experiences that I've seen so far, um, even just rallies that are happening with our federal, you know, folks and protests that are happening in those spaces and how negatively some of these elected officials are taking that. Um, But if we talk about democracy, that is part of democracy, right? We're able to protest and, you know, freedom of speech and seems to get shut down really quickly um, because I feel like some of our people are afraid to face these people who are protesting and that's not okay. You sign up to be on the seat, that means you're going to have to face the negative of it all. Um, and I, I don't see that right now. I, I definitely try to stay away from the spaces. You know, I don't want to be involved in all of that because it's just sad to see. Uh, I definitely have seen a shift in my shift in my personal just how I in, how I involve myself with the parties or involve myself with folks like our senators. I've definitely t- just taken a step back because of all the drama, the drama from from it and it turns a lot of people off. Like that's a lot of that's a reason why I think a lot of people say, "Oh, I don't get involved in politics," or "I don't mess with politics." I don't think about politics, even though we know that that's really a very difficult thing to do because politics is ingrained in almost anything that we do. But it's that people are really turned off by the show. Yeah, there we go. And it's the show more than anything uh, because there's times where I don't think that these people should react the way that they do. I think that they definitely can be better about just taking it, listening, and just moving on. And it's not, it doesn't have to be a debate, right? But shutting people down because they're trying to express their feelings or their emotions or where they're coming from is the absolute opposite, right? Of what they should be doing as elected officials. So it's it's really frustrating for me to witness and see as an elected official and as a community organizer, as someone who has spent years trying to tell people like they need to hear from you, but they're being shut down right in front of their faces. It's, it's something that, that is sort of turning me off. And I I try to focus on the, the lower level things. And I know that you want to talk federal, but for me, it's no, we're going to talk about our legislators because they actually deal with the money of what goes in our school district. They're going to deal with the money, with laws that affect your everyday life, how you eat, breathe, and everything. Live, work, everything in your life. The conversation with Shakia Donaldson was amazing. And if you missed it, please go back and listen to the full episode. But this particular part, 
it really hits. It hits real good right here. So let's take a listen, 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 listen. listen. So let me ask you this. Democracy. You you mentioned it a mm-hmm. little bit earlier in, in what it was, but how do you define democracy? Especially right now. Uh, okay, so I have, I, I'm going to give you my ideal <laughs> versus mm-hmm. how I think it is. So my ideal version of a democracy is that it is a active part. It is active participatory system that anybody can gain access to. Doesn't mean everybody needs to show up to every meeting, <laughs> but that does mean that people there should be a heightened awareness around when legislative bills hit the state floors or when um, you know your your county tax controller goes up 2% on the property taxes and how that's going to affect everybody's everything. You know, like we should, there should be a hyper awareness of not just the act of voting, but what happens after we vote and like the things that, that our elected officials are putting into place um, or are changing or the money they're taking um, in order to best represent what our values and our needs are. In order for that to happen, though, we ha- like I said, this country has created so many barriers to entry from voting to voting from just the long, the, the standard long line, the, the, the voter purging, um, the misinformation and disinformation around candidates or issues, all of those things. But in my ideal world, voting is a national holiday. <laughs> So nobody has a reason to not go. Um, we will figure out how to do secure votes from your your computer or your 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 phone because we figured out how to do everything else that way. So I feel like we can figure out voting um, to make it accessible and easy for everyone to not have to go stand online. Uh, early vote is mandated, like federally mandated, so that it's doesn't just drive people down to one day, but they have time to like think and process and go uh, when it best suits them. Uh, we would take off the felony restrictions for voting because, I mean, Florida has proven over, over what 700,000 people are just, even with the Amendment 4, because of then the poll tax of paying the restitution, are just less blocked out of voting. The amount of brothers I meet that man, like I got a charge or I still, you know, I still owe back child support. I still, you know, I still got some stuff. I still got some legal Mm -hmm. stuff to work out. And I'm like, right. And they're like, yeah, I can't. Nah, (laughs) nah, they won't let me vote. And I'm like, what? They're like, nah, I'll be paying attention. My mother talks to me about it, but like, I can't vote. And you can see the hurt in their face. And I'm just like, we have to eradicate all of that. And here's, Here's the real mark of democracy. And this is actually, I think, something we're missing at the moment. You don't always win. The real mark of democracy is not so much that it is a zero-sum game, because if I win, I win everything. And if I lose, I lose everything. But it is an exchange of ideas and resources and theories of change about how to make the country better for everybody. I really hope you all enjoyed this episode of Sticky Note Conversations and the conversation around democracy doesn't stop here. It will continue and we will have some deeper conversations with some brand new guests coming up very soon where we're still going to ask the important questions and really dive deep and understand what folks in our community are thinking and what really matters to them and how we're all connected. I look forward to seeing you again. And thanks again for listening. I hope you enjoyed this episode as much as I did. Peace. Thanks for listening to Sticky Note Conversations with Erica Washington. Hosted and executively produced by Erica Washington. With music, mixing, and editing by Black Gypsy, LLC. 
Special thanks to KUNV 91.5 in Las Vegas. This show is powered by Make It Work Nevada, a project of Tides Advocacy.